You are listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer, presented by Richard A. Boxshaw, in which I chronicle my life and attempts to become a professional writer by, you know, doing some writing. Daily. Hopefully. Hello, it's Thursday the 9th of May and uh, welcome to the Diary of a Wannabe Writer. Uh, so I've got quite an exciting day coming up. Um, I've done the research, you've probably, if you've listened to this, you've heard me talking about uh, going through the write, uh, Writers and Artists Yearbook, which is somewhere in this room, but I can't see it, so I can't show you, and I can't show you because this isn't a video podcast. Anyway, um, I've chosen, I've gone through it, and I've now chosen my um, 12 um, agents that actively encourage new writers to submit to them uh, and what I'm going to be doing later is meeting up with uh, my friend Tani who you will have heard on the podcast a week or two ago well a week or so ago um, we talked about the fact that I was helping her uh, record her audiobook and then talked a little bit about about, about her book series but um, she's a uh, uh, self-published I hate that phrase but she's published through KDP Amazon has got a fair readership um, by the sounds of it you certainly look at all her uh, Facebook groups and interactions people not Facebook just Facebook but her social media and interactions um, it's really interesting she's got some definite followers but um, her her books um, she couldn't get an agent to understand what it was about and she's I, I don't know if she discussed it on here but she was talking about how frustrating it was that you send them details explaining exactly you know elevated pitch style about what the series is about um, and they just don't get it so they clearly either haven't read the pitch or whatever anyway but she's going to help me go through the list of agents and between us we can decide which two or three are the best ones to initially submit to and then uh, on my next batch of days off because I'm working tomorrow uh, I'm going to put together the submission which will be the sample number of pages or chapters that they ask for um, cover letter which I'm going to get some help writing I mean there's a couple of sample co cover letters in the writers and artists yearbook but I suspect that these agents have seen those quite a few times so I, I kind of I don't really want to just copy and paste that and also um, yeah some of them seem a bit the, the one the one in there seems very sort of crawly and I kind of yeah I, I would read that and think you utter creep and burn the submission um, and then there's also the um, the 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 uh, that needs to be so as well as the sample chapters there needs to be the full synopsis uh, which I need to write and again the full synopsis might need more or less detail depending on who I'm submitting it to so I might need to um, there might be a full page it might be half a page um, then I need to also look about you know some prefer by email some prefer physical submissions and so <clears throat> yeah I've just got a few bits and pieces to look at um, once we've chosen the um, agents but it is finally I'm finally getting off my backside and preparing to submit something so that's that's really exciting and then the other thing uh, we are going to look at um, today is or talk about is the idea of independent publishers now I sort of I, I in my head an independent I would rather it was traditionally published um, I did check today independently published books are available from regular bookshops that have a proper ISBN and their proper books and everything um, but indie publishers tend to publish to a niche market um, and uh, and not exclusively I'm sure there are some bestsellers that were independently published but I would I would guess that is the exception rather than the norm so I think this is what I'm going to do I'm going to start approaching some um, some agents the traditional uh, method but I found an online directory of all the UK's independent publishers and I think I mentioned this before there are over a thousand of them and as I demonstrated uh, I think possibly even live on the podcast there's a few that won't be suitable for me some of the, some of some of their subject matters are so specific that you know they they wouldn't be appropriate for me to look at but what I'm going to do between now and when the first rejection letter comes back um, from the agent um, is I'm going to start going through the um, independent publishers and um, see which ones there will be useful. Now I was I was thinking about this because there are quite I've actually got quite a lot of independently published books. I'm I'm quite surprised by how many I've got, but then I like sort of niche things. Um, so for example, yesterday in the post. 
um, a book called um, Oh What a Lovely Memoir, um, which is an autobiography by Larry Dan, arrived in post. Larry Dan is the actor who played Sergeant Alec Peters in the first, I think it was eight or nine years of the bill. Um, and he's done loads of other stuff, including Carry On Films and Bits and Pieces. And that's been independently published through um, uh, an independent publishing house called Devonfire. Um, I've got uh, Hearst Publishing has done some Doctor Who biographies. I've got a couple of really wonderful ones, actually. There's the biography of, oh, sorry, autobiography of the act- actress Anika Wills, who played Polly in 60s Doctor Who with... Um, Patrick Troughton and William Hartnell, other way around, obviously. Um, and she actually did two, two, they produced it in two volumes, the first half of her career and the second half of her career. So the first one was called Self Portrait and the second half was Naked, that's the title. Um, and it's really, really good, really enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was one of the best. It's a very raw and honest biography, and I suspect not many people would be prepared to be that raw and honest but it was an absolutely terrific read I literally read them as though they were one book Uh, it was absolutely terrific Um, so there are some really good independently published books out there Um, but as I said Annika Will's biography is going to be for fans of Doctor Who realistically that's the target audience and that's not ever going to make it a bestseller Um, in the same way I've also uh, at the same time in the post yesterday got a book called Reaching a Verdict uh, reviewing the bill 1983 to 1989 Um, and it's all about that first sort of few years of the bill being produced from being a regular weekly tv series that was only on 11 weeks 12 weeks a year um and then it covers also the transition into when it went into a a, you know twice weekly ongoing drama series and it covers the first 18 months of that again very very niche um that's also by devon fire books now that's clearly not going to be um it's going to be people who are really interested in the bill that would read that and I would argue that is a very niche market I've just had a chat I assume you've got the Jacqueline Pierce autobiography I haven't actually um, but I have heard her interviewed and I suspect that one is even I suspect that's even more raw and honest than Annika Wills having heard her speak um, on uh, having met her and heard her speak on interviews yeah you wouldn't put her on live tv Um, But no, that sounds like, if that's still available, I might actually hunt that out. Thank you. Uh, Commenter in the chat room, Alistair. Um, So yeah, so so that's my plan. Today, we're going to go through the agents, um, and then I'm going to start the laborious process of going through a thousand independent publishers, publishers, because there will be some there that will have published something I've heard of that sold really well. So, you know, and I will eat my words. So that's the plan. Uh, I am flying to Toronto tomorrow for work. So um, I will actually record, I will put a podcast out and it'll be recorded this evening. I'm not going to lie. And it'll be a summary of of what we do um, and what decisions we make and and what we do with the... um, uh, with the publishers, I'm, uh, with with the um, agents, I'm not going to name any agents. That would be foolish. Not that I think any of them will listen to this. As I've said, I do this podcast as a way of keeping me focused on the writing. I I don't expect anybody to actually listen to it. Although I know at least one person does. Thank you. Um, so that's me done for today. Um, as I say, and, and then in a couple of days, I will be doing a live, well, not a live, but doing a podcast from Toronto in, I don't know why I said Toronto in a northern accent, in a Newcastle accent, but from Toronto. Um, so thank you for listening, and I will be back. You have been listening to The Diary of a Wannabe Writer, presented by Richard A. Boxall. Thank you for tuning in to my random ramblings. And if you'd like to know more about me or my projects, visit my link tree at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e forward slash Richard Wright, capital R, capital W. Thank you for listening.